In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I mean, you may be seated. Well, just sit on down whenever you want to. That's fine. That's fine. So for those who haven't met me, who's met me? Who have I met? Great. Good to see you again. I'm Justin. I'm no longer an apparition of the television screen. I am in your midst. And I don't know if you're going to like it or not, but we're going to find out. It's good to be with you all today. It's good to be, finally be here at St. Francis. So, grew up in South Georgia, grew up fishing. And you know how many times when I was fishing, I would have loved for Jesus to walk beside me and say, hey, fish right there, and you're going to catch a lot of fish. Right? How many people have been fishing and you don't catch anything? See, my granddad used to say they don't call it catching. And I'm like, why not? Why not? But I don't know how many times I've been fishing and I've wanted Jesus to come just like in this story and say, hey, Justin, just throw your net over there, throw your pole over there, and you're going to catch so many fish your little Carolina skiff's going to sink. Because too many times that I come back from fishing with nothing in my boat but a lot of sweat and tears. Well, not tears, but sweat and disappointment. But you see, that's how God operates right this is how god operates he surprises us at every turn he surprises us every time we think we know better and we think we've worked so hard at something god surprises us god comes into our midst and he calls us to a new direction and the disciples today very much like you and me probably we're looking at Jesus like, who are you? Right? We take that for granted sometimes how human the disciples are. Remember, disciples are ordinary people like you and me who do extraordinary things. They're not some kind of extraordinary human being or some superhero. They are quite literally like you and me. They just do incredible things. So the disciples' reaction to Jesus is one of probably a little bit of contempt, a little bit of frustration, a little bit of who are you to tell us how to fish? We've been fishing for 20 years. We've always done it this way. That's not something we say in the Episcopal Church, is it? Right? We don't talk about that kind of stuff. We've always done it this way, do we? No, we don't. I don't know why y'all are laughing. We are the people who get up out of our real estate and our pews and we give it to visitors. We don't claim things. We change things all the time, don't we? Everybody's looking at their toes now. They're like, what are you talking about? Well, that's kind of what it probably felt like to the disciples because really they had been fishermen their entire lives. And then this guy with probably a beard of some sort walks along on the shore and says, hey, I've never fished before like y'all, but hey, throw your nets over there and you're going to catch tons of fish. And it happens. And that's what's really important in this story. They don't just catch like four or five fish. They catch so many fish their boats almost sink. God not only surprises us, but God is full of abundance. The kingdom of God is about abundance, not scarcity. It's not about holding on to what we think we know. It's about releasing what we think we know and embracing Jesus Christ at every moment in our lives. That's the hardest part. The hardest part is letting go. Right? How many of us want to let go our die-hard beliefs when we're challenged by God to do something new? How many of us want to leave the comfortable and go to the uncomfortable? Right? It's really hard to do. But if we're honest with ourselves, maybe we've kind of lost this over the last couple thousand years, but since it's been a couple thousand years, I'll give us some, some permission to let it go. But I think we forget the great adversity those early disciples experienced in sharing the good news of Jesus Christ how many challenges they were faced with, and how much it was uncomfortable for them. How much of that was totally, ridiculously hard, and yet they stayed the course. They stayed the course, and they followed through because they trusted the God who surprised them on the shores, and he trusted the God who brought them in abundance, not just a little. And that's what you and I are called to do. You and I are called to be disciples, not in some kind of romantic kind of way, but in a hard, real kind of way, to move beyond what we know 
into something bigger and deeper than ourselves. My brothers and sisters, you can look out on the world right now, and I don't know what you see, but I see a world that needs more God, that needs more Jesus, but not in the kind of Bible-beating way that I grew up with in South Georgia with the Primitive Baptist. I hope there's no Primitive, are there any Primitive Baptists here? I really should preface those before by asking that question. So just backstory, my grandfather, who you hear a lot about, was a Primitive Baptist, and going to those services, oh boy. That was a whole new experience of Jesus that I'll never forget. And there's nothing wrong with that. But there was a lot that was very different than as I've grown, as I've grown into an adult, and I'm 37 years an Episcopalian, as I've grown in this tradition, there was a lot about that that I just don't relate with. I didn't relate with the kind of beating us over the head and telling us we weren't good, as if the pastor who was sitting up there was somehow better than us. See, that's really important because... We, clergy, I'm no different than you all. I mean, for all the men in the room, I I put my pants on the same way you do. I can't say that I put my pants on the same way you women do, but you get the point. I'm the same as you. I'm the same as you. I'm just called to a particular kind of ministry. We're all called to a particular kind of ministry. And we have to spend our life like the disciples did, realizing what that might be. And we don't beat the Bible over people's heads. We don't tell people how wrong they are as if we're somehow better than them. We have to remember what the disciples did. They're the great model for our ministry today. They went out and they proclaimed the good news to everybody who would listen. They went out and they baptized. They went out and they invited and they welcomed. They went out and they loved people and they cared for people. And they planted communities of believers who could support each other does that not sound like a church come on give me an amen amen yeah i like that we're going to do that some more later in the year just get ready for it but that's what church is about that's what a community of believers is called to do we're not called to sit out here and argue about who's right and who's wrong as if somehow our position is better than theirs we're called to love each other in disagreement We're called to love that person that gets under our skin. We're called to love that person that we want to be around every single day of our lives. We're called to love and support and care for. To go fishing for people, as Jesus says to the disciples, is to remind us that we too are called to sow those realities, love, forgiveness, hope, into the world in which we live, in which we operate. So we too realize that if we trust God and we listen to God, those relationships in our lives that need to be enhanced will be enhanced. Those relationships in our lives that are strong will get stronger. And those new horizons for opportunities to connect with people for the sake of the gospel will grow at every turn, at every turn. Because every day, God looks at us and says, throw your nets over there. Throw your nets over there and you're going to catch some fish. Don't stay in the comfortable waters over here. Move yourself. Know that it might be hard, but know deep in your heart that I'm with you, that I am here with you, that you're here in a community of believers, that you're here with the faithful walking among you and with you to do the work I'm calling you to do. You're not alone because I am your God. I am the God who created you. I'm the God who knew you before you were born. And I'm the God who loves you. And I'm the God who stands with you on that boat, in your mission field, wherever that is, in your workplace, your school, in your communities, in your bridge clubs, in your card clubs, in your golf games. I am the God who stands with you in those relationships, in those conversations, and says, I'm here. Throw your nets right there. I wonder what that would look like if we all stepped out of the comfortable stepped into the uncomfortable and cast our nets in a different direction to that place that scares us the most and open our hearts to new possibilities and new horizons. Amen.